in all honesty. But of course, step down in competition gives them a little bit of breathing room. But there is that international prowess of people like Stanislaw. So I have an expectation here that at least there'll be some good bones like Vertigo up here on me. Yeah, we'll have the structure set in stone with the have to show it in the server here that we should be hopping on into. Second map of play. Kicking things off with a pistol and some aggression. A lot of aggression towards this Audi yard. It's going to be complexity. Looking for a brawl. Looking for a battle here. P250 to lead the pack here. Grim not connecting on those headshots, but finally Ooh. does. We'll nail the head off of Stan. It, Warden is apparently oh. in the server instead of Infinite, <laughs> seemingly. Uh, Tech delay didn't necessarily go in their favor, and what a hit that this could actually end up being. Yeah. I actually didn't know that was the uh, the issue. I, I, I kind of had an idea that there was maybe an uninstall on accident, but I didn't realize that, you know, maybe there, there still needs to be a little bit more time before we will see Infinite in the server. I don't know if he's coming back, though. Either way, this one to the 2v3. It doesn't go any further, and now Warden here needs to step up in the clutch. We'll see if he can uh, take down his old organization. Not going to start, though. JT going to cap that thing off. The last time Warden has played an official was on Complexity in January of 2018. So he, he was also coaching then, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm assuming this was another stand-in situation where, you know, maybe Def couldn't play or, right. or Ye couldn't play or something like that. But, uh, yeah, it's been a while. Uh, 38 years of age. Taking taking to the server. I mean, you don't see this every day. But, uh, man, what a time for it to happen. Because, I mean, they were looking so good. Infinite was having such a great series as well. Such a rock on that on that beat bomb side on Vertigo. You would have loved to have him firing on all soldiers here on Duke as well. Yeah, it's a, probably just got to be a kick in the gut. To be honest with you, because again, I mean, I don't know fully what to anticipate out of Warden here. I mean, obviously, like you said, that official quite some time ago, he's been coaching for quite some time before another that. another game <laughs> as well. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So I imagine that he hasn't really booted up the old Counter-Strike in quite some time to at least play. Which, uh, that usually, you know, sometimes you can talk, talk about coaches... You know, every once in a while, Axe will stand in. Like, he's actually pretty good at the game, right? He can deliver at a high level, even though he is a coach. I don't know if Corden is going to be able to step up much in that department here. This is a pretty nasty execute to deal with. It's full bombardment of utility, and that's going to overwhelm for sure. Free bomb plan on that upper site. And I think Complexity have figured out where Warden is playing. That is definitely something that JT will keep in mind. Upper side hit after upper side hit, it can work. And we've seen IGLs target a specific part of the map again and again to, to great succession. I wouldn't put it past JT. A very capable caller in that sense. Has some of the best set pieces, if not the best set pieces in North America. So look towards him really pestering this upper bomb site and eventually causing conditioning, right? I mean... They can go up 5-0 and just go through upper side hits. And that sixth round, they can eventually just get a free B bomb site or free ramp control or maybe an outside timing. These kinds of issues can really fester and they can fester really quickly. Yeah, 100%. Going to be a little bit vulnerable here on the side of Forsaken, no question about it. And even when Complexity are just kind of threatening those sort of executes, they had so many mollies to engulf that site that just nowhere comfortable really to play at all. And we talked about the depth that Infinite really brings to the table here as a kind of rock, as an anchor for this team. I think someone else is going to be playing over in that ramp room position for him. And Warden actually going to be filling in towards Silo here. So they've already had to switch up some of the positions just because Infinite plays such crucial real estate. JT, right around the corner lies a lot of firepower, a lot of pistols in the server. That molly is great. Not going to really let JBA go forward there and get much success. But it's a full gamble on this upper bomb site. All five players here. And Floppy selling quite a bit. Throwing that mini, mini smoke molly on opposite vent. But I'm sure that his position must be noted and rotations are swift. 60 down into the lower bomb site. 
makes his way into radio, but is it too little too late? I think it is here, Cole. Halzer finds that opening. Nicely done. Very difficult to get a break past. They don't have any mollies oh. to engulf the site, but it's actually a nice little output out of Stan. Oh, just needed that one more. As now Wiz comes through in rotation, picks up an AK, but they are transitioning quickly in towards that A side. They're going to hit the upper bomb site, and Wiz is going to be on a bit of a lobby flank here. Timing is soon going to be made aware that he could be in this position, but he's going to be pretty quick here, Holzerk. Yeah, he's prepared for that. Quick dismissal, and we're on to the 3-0 start there. Great damage there for Forsaken. Forces quite a couple of rebuys. But Halzerk is going to actually stick with the five rifles. I do like that, staying more mobile on this offense. But on the flip side of things, it's no problem for Wiz. He's got his big green out. And, I mean, if we got to talk about heavy lifting, Wiz is definitely your man. CT opting on Nuke is just paramount for, for, for a good defense. And, and you want to see him hit the ground running straight away here. He's playing around. Silo here looking for some sort of action. Wiz playing very forward with that op. I think a lot of the heavier firepower pieces on this Forsaken roster are going to be looking to get in their face on the CT side as much as possible. Take a lot of risks, take a lot of gambles here, trying to get those early man advantages so that they can start to pull things in their pocket. Wiz, oh, this flash. The chaining of utility here, perfect from complexity. To nullify Wiz, make sure that he can't find anything towards that outer yard. Another one of those good nuke players on teams prior. This guy can do a lot of damage for his team and he expects some big things here. As he's made a perfect reposition, Ooh. a perfect rotation on in. Even lands the collateral here. Doesn't realize that one has slipped the gap, but Floppy on 15 HP is going to struggle to have a lot more impact out of that. Textbook crossfire there between Wiz and Six. Makes things very difficult for Complexity to make any sort of headway. But great rotations there from Wiz and a swift double kill from Sixy. And JT's little lower lurk is rendered useless. See a lot of different IGLs opt in for this, this lower lurk. And it can be very effective, but of course, you do need that extra prong of attack for it to be effective. Keep your eyes on this idea in, in future rounds because it, it can be very deadly. 100%. It's actually uh, very promising when you're able to get that space. JT can call a lot easier from this sort of position where he can cut off rotations and, and get his teammates in line. But get hunted down there a little bit. After time, JT oh, will wow. go down. One isn't super d devastated. It would have been nice to save that AK, but... Either way, uh, just kind of following up off your point there is, is that, you know, when... You do have to concede that ground on the side of Forsake, and I, I mentioned there could be some struggles in rotation here for this team. It could even be further extended with Warden. Right there, uh, incredible reposition from Wiz with the op. He gets nullified towards that outer yard. He doesn't stick around to just spam through the smoke with AWP, something that a lot of players that play a stagnant defense on Nuke are willing to do. He instantly transitions in towards a ramp defense to coordinate with 60. It makes his job all the more easy, but Warden's job is pretty difficult here. Gets blasted out of the server, and it's damaged through the wall right there into Stan, putting him on notice as well. Holzerk is going to start things off in favor, but JT's been nullified towards that outer yard. Raw aim from Holzerk on this hero AK, but it's all the firepower that they have left up in this, and he gets another one! So even more room being given over, but there's Wiz again from J-Hall to chime in. Rifle retrieved from Grimmy. He does have armor behind it. And now Floppy can grab an A1S for a liege as well. So not out of the woods just yet are Forsaken. But with the ever-present Wiz, there is definitely room to, to kind of switch up this rotation. He's given up so much space here though, Cole. They can go down to that lower site pretty much for free here. Yeah, not going to meet a lot of resistance. And it's always difficult to play in the post plant towards Absolutely. this lower bomb site. There are so many nasty crossfires that you have to break past here. And they're going to break open control to take even more control here. JBA going to be next to meet him at bat. Double swing doesn't quite come through, though. Instead, they're going to give him isolated duels. And Grim not going to be available for a trade. Great molly from JBA going to oh. find further success. Playing an incredible defense here, locking things down. Smoke to further nullify Grimm's position here. 
And getting that bomb is going to be near impossible. The HE would have finished him, but JBA will take it instead. That is just clinical from JBA. Utility usage on point. Crosshair placement, just eclectic. I mean, that is magnificent stuff from the youngster. I mean, this is the kind of play that I've been hyping him up for. It's just, it's the intelligence and the awareness that if he does go down, plant is available, post plant is difficult, as we spoke about prior. But, I mean, he makes it look so easy. Those three kills looked like it was been given to him on a silver platter, but he... He manufactures that silver platter in his own way. Makes his job pretty easy here. Floppy though, somehow sneaking his way down the vents. Gets caught by a little bit of spam damage, but again, that real estate is always worth a little bit of trading of HP. Once you're able to get down the vents here, you start to make the job of the CT is so much more difficult. It starts to spread the resources thin, especially if you're able to combine your efforts with JT making his way towards secret. And now Grim could also follow up here. A clear target of this lower bomb site, bringing Wiz's AWP though, and another fantastic reposition from Wiz is going to get met by Sixy backing him up, and now they got a much better crossfire here to work off of over towards lower. Whereas Complexity kind of clearly stacking the deck on this side of things, making Ooh. some noise here as well. Yeah, footsteps given over, but I mean, great defense and and great strategy here from Complexity, leaving Elise outside. To cut off some rotations, but the cavalry have arrived for Forsaken. And Sixie's a rock here with getting a free double there. Just Wizluff up in the scene. He needs one, or at the very least, needs to stay alive before this bomb goes down. Oh, but Warden pushing past the smoke <laughs> right there is going to collect on a Grim. It's going to lead them to a last ditch effort over towards this A side. Some of the lurking that Elise has been doing is actually going to give them some valuable ground to safely plant, at least to get a 2v3 rolling here. JT's repositioned in towards lobby is going to be very promising. And Elise is covering off a lot of ground as well. JT going to walk right into the op here. Great preparation from Wiz. And it's going to put it all on the shoulders of Elise here in a 1v3. Going to take the fight towards Wiz as well. He's going to win it. But a quick trade out of Stanislaw is going to get the job done. And they will close off this post plant. Should be able to claim the AWP from Wiz's dead body as well. But... I mean, that's that's the kind of work that you got to do if, if you're warden, warden there. Play irregular CS. Just kind of bound through the smokes. I mean, that's all you can really do. Of course, your mechanics aren't the most stellar. But at the very least, you could potentially surprise some of these players. Get yourself a free kill here and there. But, yeah, credit to Wiz. And I, I think, again, very good, very good uh, rotations there. And intelligence to, to stay alive at the, at the top of ramp instead of mindlessly just autopiloting his way up to hut now always trying to close that space it can be easy to overextend but you got to always time your aggression with your teammates on those retakes and i felt like that's something that Wiz was what? certainly able to do although leash <laughs> gonna win out the head to head there popping the head off sometimes you just get knocked out right there and Elise certainly gonna be able to do so that's gonna set a little bit of difficulty. There's that rotation presence out of the server pretty early. At least there's a trade back there. Nice shot from Stan. Well, that was the real firepower within this round. 4v4. This GBA decides to reclaim ramp. Set up a little bit of a crossfire with 60. It's one of the most dangerous crossfires within Nuke. But they're just going to circumnavigate it entirely. Back to the upper bomb site. Warden in tow and Stan in opposite vent. How does this crossfire fare? Warden playing a pretty good game here on, on the jiggle. And it's going to allow Stan to strike here first. Warden to play off his contact. Great coordination here. And Warden okay. showing up big time with a nice little 3k. He's topping the charts right now. Warden <laughs> absolutely farming up a storm there on the eco. It's a little bit exciting when you see him just come through and honestly look a little bit comfortable you know he's nothing super flashy but he's locking yeah. things down just fundamental counter-strike i mean playing off the contact of stand and opposite vent you can see a lot of situations where stand-ins just kind of throw that situation away maybe swing too early but ward looking good I, I definitely didn't think i would i would say that in this series today but <laughs> here we are Nice little forward angle there from JBA as well. Catching floppy early is never easy. And it's going to really 
nullify this A aggression. Bomb dropped in the center of the floor there. Warden following it up. There about two molly kills come through. Is that going to be enough to re-inspire? Doesn't look like this. Wiz is already transitioned on in here. And JT is going to be left at a minute 15 without bomb control. And all of the CTs just swarming on top of the bomb as well, making his job all the more difficult. Yeah, at that point, you can definitely tell Cole just trying to burst their way into that upper bomb site off of mechanics alone. But JBA getting that initial kill, then Warden standing within the flames, managing that spray nicely. JT, again, I mean, there's still room for him to maybe clutch up here. Spots out another player in top rafters. But is he aware of the second player tucked in as well? He is up 17 HP and Wiz, oh my goodness, making it a little dicey there. But shuts it down nonetheless and Forsaken right the ship. They have money to play with, so no harm, no foul. But credit to those upper side anchors again to lock it down. Yeah, doing some excellent work right there in defense. Again, JBA taking that forward angle right there. Winning that fight, it completely shuts down all of the squeaky presence that Complexity had on offer. So that makes the A execute a whole lot more difficult. Again, Complexity going to be onto a Scrappy Bird. Just no scouts this time to deal with Wiz. They're just going to have to make it happen with the Eagles. And as the HE sails in, they should hear all the rotations. They're actually going to quickly transition down towards Secret here to cover with the rifles. Stan needs to buy a little bit of time here, though. Smoke could go a long way. Warden going to join up, though. This is some great reads coming through from Forsaken. There's that Molly. But it's not actually dispelling Warden off of this vent angle. He's still got so much room to work with alongside Stan. But I love this little boost here to they peer into that angle. But there's Warden immediately taking contact. But now he's stuck. He's definitely stuck, and he has to give away a rifle. Just Stan actually in this lower site and he's been tagged up as well so room for complexity to play with and a rifle to work with as well leash getting his hands on that one yeah, again they're going to be willing to give over full lower control here to try and retake in the pose plant bold there's a risk here we'll see if they can get away with it holster breaking that glass open going to get the utility out of stan they should be able to transition safely in towards the site not meeting any smoke or anything of the like, so good to go on that sense here. GT taking a lot of fights, but where's that? Oh. The holes or has it? Floppy gonna try and lurk out towards A, but JPA was still sticking around, and all their HP has dwindled so low that it makes this retake all the more likely. And another smoke up for control side. They can kind of march their way up. Stan has actually picked up the AWP from Wiz, and now the route in for Forsaken is so simple. Halzer gets a parting gift of a rifle from JBA, but the round has been gifted over in kind. Six rounds now for Forsaken. And again, great little pause there from from Forsaken. And and I do like that they were eventually able to give up the B bomb site initially and wait for wait for the, the individuals to kind of make their way back into the B bomb site. As soon as Stan gets his hands on the AWP, watches down that line at range. And gives room for that right those rifles to move their way up as well. So calculated play from Forsaken. Granted, a risk for sure, but it pays off. Hundred percent. High risk right there, but honestly, letting complexity in these light rounds kind of funnel right into the crosshair. There's going to be a little bit of a setup here for Wiz, though. Taking this forward angle with the AWP in the back of Red Box. And Lee's just trying to deal with it. They have multiple members ready to. Try and throw this back in their face here. Grim. Right around the corner lies Warden taking a deep angle. This is some confidence out of him. 10 and 6 right now. Again, just <laughs> very surprising to see this sort of outfit. Had a good pistol round, but he's actually going to be bested there. Grim. Able to bring us back to reality here, but Wiz will take it right on back. And Elise has actually transitioned his position away from a trade potential. So, right back into the 4v4. Yeah, JT actually caught out in the open. Great pick for Wiz to find as the outside control is nullified. They'll re-smoke it to potentially feign some presence. But watch for 60 here on this re-aggression. I think he'll be caught out and Grim is very aware of this. A lot of space being given over now. Now Wiz caught under fire. There's Floppy. 
and a liege on upper site. It's just JBA left up in this. A lot of individual aim duels on that CT re-aggression not working out for Forsaken. And complexity punish. A very forward right there. A lot of CT aggression coming through and a lot of it punished there. Maybe if Wiz could have found some extra success, that could have been something. But JBA certain to save. And Complexity going to continue with a little bit of work here on the CT side. She said I should say, but oh, no, never mind. Not certain to save it. Well, he actually is waiting for him with open arms. And actually already running tell. pretty low. Yeah, now come to think of it, it's it's just Wiz's AWP and it's Glass Cannon. A1S on Stanislaw and I guess, yes, 60 can definitely buy here. Um, probably get a rifle out on him. But bar that, I mean, it's not the prettiest buy. And there's definitely room here for complexity to, to make a half, a half out of this yet. We're talking potentially six rounds if they're able to convert this round here. I think Wiz might have been spotted by Liege there. Well, they kind of further hints at it, but no flash ping makes it seem like maybe they didn't catch him there. It's a free kill. JT going to walk right into the line of fire. Exactly what they were hoping for here. 60 playing with his utility out. Gets that molly down, but has to concede ramp control here. But in a 4v5, you can kind of concede a little bit of that ramp space, right? Hope that they funnel on into you. Mm -hmm. Get those rotations down right, and this might be a risk that could be rewarded. And you have information from Stannis on J-Hall as well. Huge double kill as Complexity don't completely clear out their angles, and there's 60 on his re-aggression. It's just a liege left up in this, and I mean, you got to give credit for Stan to give away a lot of space and then take it all the way back at the bottom of ladder base. And there's JBA on that deagle. Snatching back his rifle from a liege. And I mean they route the they route the force by the, the fantastic work there from Forsaken. And I think in particular just great work from Sixie and Stan. Yeah, absolutely. I uh am pleasantly surprised by the just amount of depth that they're still showing here. Yeah. It doesn't really look like uh playing with a stand in situation is, is hurting the mental too much maybe taking a little bit of that pressure off as well but it feels like they're hitting all the strides right now and again something that i, I kind of were was warning everyone about was you know last time this team played out on the ct side i felt like their defense was lacking a little bit of the rotations mm -hmm. there i thought it was lacking some of the very quick protocols they have the split second decisions that is required to properly defend up against a, a effective t side like we know complexity can really bring like these individuals have shown before versus some of the top competition that you were talking about. Well, we're seeing that out of them this day. And it's very impressive. Yeah, and it's it's the rotations that are winning them these rounds, right? That the very thing that we were talking about being their potential weakness is what's their strength at this point with the hampered roster. It's it's truly magical to see them pull it off right now. Oh. Elise actually pulling off a twist in his own right, but there's Wiz to shut him down after that initial kill and JBA topside anchor duties pass with flying colors. And Wiz again shutting down JT outside. It's just Halzerk left up in this, and again, magical stuff there from the CT Opera. And look at him, man, pushing through Squeak Door and shutting down his counterpart of Halzerk. What a round from the XEG Opera. This is exactly the Wiz that we need to see here. This is oh, kind yeah. of who I was talking about when we come into this series and we kind of see what this team has to deliver here. I, I want to see Wiz come through and, and really fire on all cylinders on this map here. Play like he doesn't have a lot of pressure. Play with some confidence. And he's taking all these sort of fights. JBA playing alongside him here. It's absolutely fantastic. I mean, Warden's job made easy. He just has to sit in the back of the bomb site. He's fully blinded up. And when he becomes on blind, he sees that JBA has found all the kills to defend that site. So... This is uh, this is incredible out of Forsaken here, and Lexi still have a good read on on how they want to deal with this right now. It's it's really been lacking in terms of gun rounds converted here. And I mean, as far as ideas are concerned, it the 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 playbook looks so stale right now. No real outside shenanigans that have been working out. You don't see Elise working big garage as much. And you have situations like this where Wiz can trounce his way up ramp and get a free kill. 
I mean, JT's outside work has not been as effective as they were hoping. I'm sure they're going to try their hand at it yet again, but... They're, they're running out of options here, Cole. Yeah, I think it's a combination here of maybe JT struggling a little bit towards outer yard, but he's been able to take that space successfully. It's been the ramp side, you know, lower plays here that have been very hesitant That's and have been getting blasted by Wiz. Oh my god. Who's just now That's dropped the bomb. the bomb. This is just devastating here. What are they supposed to do? Nothing, I suppose. I mean, you don't have a flash to re-engage and get that bomb back, but maybe Ooh. just a reface and a couple of misses might get you way back in down to 17 hp but warden has done his job as the top side anchor gone one for one but they should still be aware of jba surely taps out one and the calm isn't fast enough okay i say a tap out that, that is actually whiz again from what is that heaven mini i'm pretty sure heaven yeah omnipresent is this guy i mean he's looking like simple with yeah. the kind of rotations that he's having right and it, it sounds like an exaggeration but that is what simple is known for when, when he was in his heyday on ct nuke he would just be everywhere on the map just pushing i mean you saw him in ramp then you saw him in heaven i mean that that's the kind of proactive ct play that you'd love to see out of your ct offer and of course it's, he's getting the kills to back it up as well this is what's required out of this map out of an opera is that sort of proactivity i mean like you said when the best teams are able to bring in a good nuke it's offers like like this sort of performance that is able to deliver their this is Ready for that good communication coming through from JBA to call that over and give that information. And with another one with the AWP, Grim not able to find much ground here as Warden delivers a multi kill. And they could just get that 11 4 half complexity struggling big time in this first half here. I mean, this is just unbelievable scenes. I mean, I am just, I am just stunned. Warden getting multi kills on the top site. Wiz having an unbelievable performance in his own right. And complexity, the roster to be out of ideas on Nuke. Talk about shocking. I mean, to think that potentially they would have stalled it. I know we're thinking very far into the future, but if we do go to Ancient Cole and Infinite comes back, think about how devastating that might be to the mentality of complexity to go into that third map. Yeah, that, that, I've been... Yeah, I have to be just mentally crushing on top of Wiz, who has not been scared of anything at all. JT, though, will take care of Stan. That smoke does not fade in his favor. And they're going to really have to rely on Wiz taking this deep control because they don't have anything else here. Ward making a very quick and loud rotation outside or towards that lower side of things here. He's taking that heavy control here, but six, he's kind of prepared for some sort of aggression. He's right above him, though, so... How much can he really do? He's not going to be able to beat at least to the punch, but at the very least, JBA able to beat Floppy in the head-to-head -head here and take more space. Ooh, this is becoming very awkward. Now they should have an idea that there is the potential of Heaven Presence here, but at least could still have that element of surprise. This is the kill that essentially decides the round. If Elish goes down here, he can just spiral out of control. But Warden again gets another impactful kill. But there's Grim. <gasps> To drop down, but that's the bomb! JBA spotted the bomb, and Halzerk has just been left up into an impossible clutch. 30 seconds left on the clock, and as he tries to reset the situation, he has to wonder, where did it all go wrong? He can still slide down the vent here, but instead he's going to target that upper bomb site here. The issue is, 60's already fast on this flank. JBA's just buying so much time, gets a flash being out, but you're not going to anticipate this position here from 60 he was last seen oh, wow. over towards heaven but he's gonna find the flank and close out an 11 to 4 half for forsaken this is incredible but we'll have to wait until after a break to get back to it
There is nothing like Warren boosting the morale here of Forsaken in the first <laughs> half of play on Nuke to get Infinite back into position here. He is returning into the server, and he is up 11-4. to 4. What a fantastic position to find yourself in when you might have just thought, you know, this was going to be a tough map, but instead, they still have chances here on Nuke. And it's going to be a top set piece to set things rolling for Forsaken. At least Ooh. bounding his way into the bottom of the hut. Rips the head off of JBA, but there's Stanislaw out of the site. Infinite Sixty chiming in as well. The picks are coming in thick and fast with the T's. A bomb plant to boot. And there's a nade for some extra damage. We're looking clean for a Forsaken pistol round win here on this T side. Yeah, they're just trying to funnel out of heaven, but you know how that goes. It's just not going to work out in your favor. They're slowly starting to realize it, and they actually aren't even going to test it. Both players have armor, so get away with the save. But man, is that shocking right there. Forsaken, they start things off, or actually on the wrong foot there. At least diving into the action there, getting the instant kill. But then you kind of look at the minimap there, and there was no one to help out Halzerk on the site. Once Elise dives in, it's up to Halzerk to defend all of that, uh, that, that A side end. There's only so much you can do. Mm -hmm. Didn't realize that uh, there was everyone kind of heading outside of Squeaky as well. So Forsaken able to make quick work of that pistol and, and very well off the back of that could make quick work of this map. Yeah, you have so much momentum in your favor getting that bomb down. But Complexity do get to save quite a bit of armor. So they have some investments that could work out. FAMAS on Floppy and Grim. UMP as we spoke about previously for Halzer. And a scout for Elige. But I mean, look at the oodles of utility Forsaken have to work with now. With just such a clean pistol. It makes their lives a lot easier. World is essentially their oyster. Also outside just shoulder speaking for information. But there's the outside control that Infinite was looking for. And Warden might not, be, might not have been able to do something like that. But Infinite sure can. Yeah, yeah, I was about to say, you know, Warden actually could be a little bit more of a liability on this T-side when it comes to the entry prowess, but now that you got Infinite back, like you said, he can really deliver those sort of kills, and in doing so, it's actually called in some safe? rotations elsewhere. Yeah, they, they just evacuated the ramp side there off the back of that opening pick towards the outer yard, so this is going to be a save, but even that is a little bit concerning because you have Stan mm -hmm. kind of in a position to encapsulate them here. He's just going to completely catch them off guard. Maybe one. See, even though Halzer trades there, at the end of the day, you've, you've done you've done the damage. They can't pick up another rifle. There's less personnel to to upgrade, but there won't be any chasing. So, I mean, realistically, three rifles into the next in a full eco is not the worst thing in the world. But at the end of the day, the issue at hand is you are down thirteen to four. You are down nine rounds, and the comeback that is ahead of you is so so big to just overcome at this point i think complexity might have again done that that thing where we talked about heading into this series of kind of digging themselves in a deep hole 
it's going to be even further extended by the pistol success in the second half here in Forsaken. They only are this time, you know, just a couple rounds away of closing things out here. I mean, we're talking complexity, just, you know, one mistake on the CT side is a very similar position in which Forsaken found themselves on map one, and we saw the clawback, we saw the fight, and I imagine we're going to see some sort of fight of complexity on this map. I mean, you'd but, like uh, to think, right? As soon as yeah. the AWP comes out for Halzuk, surely there's legs to this map, and, and we don't just blow out our way into into Ancient. But, I mean, with the momentum that Forsaken have now, I wouldn't be surprised in, in, the, in the same token if they just run over complexity here. Yeah, that'd be a tough to beat heading into a third map of Ancient. Waiting for us. Scary scenes here. Already a 4v5 start. They're waiting for this regression, although Floppy will still claim his kill. Get in and out with the frag. A little bit of hesitation setting in here, but Grim sticking around in towards Hut. Feels like he's maybe be dispatched of that Molly actually doesn't force him forward. Instead, he'll bail out. They're going to continue to test Floppy, though. We know his capabilities as an anchor there. Another crispy kill. Six is going to hit the deck. Rotation's arriving over towards Jay Hall. Spray is a little bit labored, but Halzer comes through with a very rapid trade. And it's all in the back of Infinite here to close out in this 1v2 without bomb in his control, but still plenty of time to work with. 35 seconds left on the clock. He's just going to kick it into gear here. He's still walking about, slowly dwindling that clock, and both players now very zoned in on where he could be in ramp. Yeah, there's just such limited angles for Infinite to really pop out of. And with two individuals still alive for complexity, they can kind of search for where Infinite resides. Hauser takes care of business. And those three rifles, we talked about the potential of how scary it could be. And the trade potential there in J-Hall works wonders. A bit odd there from Forsaken. You don't necessarily see them have that many holes in their offense when they're, when they're crossing into these bomb sites, but... No player actually dedicated to watching the, the ladder base there, and it cost them giving away so much damage to complexity, and they can't really find a way back after that. And missing some of that utility as well. Imagine if they had a J-Hall molly. Yeah. You know, that, that floppy second kill is great, but the fact that the, the players swing, double swing from J-Hall is really promising, and that's the promising protocols from complexity that we should see more. This is why I was talking about the faith that I still kind of have in this team mm -hmm. to manage with the CT side. And a round like that can certainly re-inspire the troops here because they've been able to pull off some very good comebacks in the past. And this time they've just kind of given themselves more room to work with by not letting that round slide. We still have to get through this force by though into Oof. ramp once more and Floppy stays alive yet again. We didn't talk about the importance of his double kill in the round previous i mean just such a rock on this ramp thus far and they're gonna try to test him yet again but look at infinite infinite's gotten all this big garage control and sure he only has a tech nine but if he times this correctly maybe he can find some damage a dink onto grim as well mid to long range there but and grim's gonna need some help the clock? yeah they've got to they've got to speed things up and they've got to help infinite Grim is just pretty much stuck in mini right now for the remainder of the round and, and just a bullet away from death here. It's going to need to be some reinforcements arriving onto the scene towards this upper bomb site in which they're gearing up for an execute. JT on the nuke wall there is going to not find a single kill. He does some great damage, but it's no frags confirmed there. Elise will find one in the meantime, but panicked rotations up towards heaven and 10 seconds left on the clock is not a lot of time, especially when bomb just now being planted. Vince is being covered here. Flashes aren't connecting. Oh. And it could be Forsaken stealing this round away. It will be Forsaken stealing this round away as Halzerk's off to save. How they pulled that off. 20 seconds left on the clock. As you said, Grim caught on an island in mini. Eventually goes down. And you'd think that guaranteed there's a double kill lined up there for Grim. Or not for Grim. What, what was it? Floppy there? Or Elige? JT on the on the yeah, back JT, wall there. Yeah, shit, guaranteed two kills there, but just damage and and no frag at the end of it all. I mean, this is this is clinical from Forsaken, and we're running out of runway here, Cole. Ancient's looming. I mean, 
just talking a lot about a little bit of the difference here in the stellar CT side that we saw out of Forsaken. Warden, Warden was finding some nice multi kills on on mm -hmm. a very similar position to JT right there. And like you said, I, I very much so thought that he was going to back a kill at the very least, do some more damage. That's a dreamy lineup when they open up the squeaky door as well. Like, doesn't get any easier. But a quick dispatch of JT out of the rifle of Forsaken, it just does so much work here. And we can have an even quicker day at the office. If Forsaken keep this up, man, this is just stunning, especially considering that that stand-in situation has just not haunted them at all. I mean, we're thinking this series is over. We'll have a, a nice long break before for complexity to, to kind of ease their way into this qualifier now that Warden's playing for this roster. But, I mean, it has boosted the morale for this roster and then some. Up 14-5, to five, and I mean, there's no looking back at this point. We're still game on. Zerk. Missing a couple of shots here. Elise goes down one for one. Not being able to fully deliver any output and still struggling to connect here. They've tossed in a molly towards heaven as well, but finally Holzerk continuing to swing for the fences. He's going to find some ground here. 50 seconds left on the clock. There's going to be some continued aggression. JT he gets flashed by his teammates here. They're going to start to scale quickly in towards Big Garage and again, valuable real estate. JT will fall to 60's rifle. And we're back into even stead. Oh, that's such an awkward scenario for the T's. You've got lower control, you've got big garage control, but where do you end? I mean, how do you cross the bomb into some safe territory? I guess you have to sacrifice a few bodies on the way. Hauser gets another, but I mean, Sixy's just got to hit an insane shot, and he does. He does knock Hauser off his perch, and Infinite's actually able to get the bomb plant in the lower site. So into this 1v2 clutch, and it's pretty doable, all things said, if, if Infinite has time to reposition here. He's going for an isolated duel here right now. Floppy is already down to half HP. We'll see if he's prepared for this aggression. He's not. Infinite putting it into the 1v1. The bomb planted the Spotted. safe transfer to the site there for Grim at the very least to try and get onto things. But it's a 10-second defuse, and Grim's forced to chase. And 60, brother, Infinite just running away here. <laughs> we'll close things down. Grim, nothing he could do in that sort of situation. And Infinite, he was able to take that last half off. But he's on point in the second here, and it's going to be map point for Forsaken here. Yeah, took a short little vacation and came back to just such a beautiful little <laughs> ending of a map. Closes it out just so calmly in that 1v2. And you can just see the way 60's playing that. He's just playing purely for information. Just wants to set up Infinite for success. Gives him the route into that lower bomb site. And I mean, just so proactive in that reposition. Floppy doesn't know what hit him. Such a meager buy now to defend their honor, our complexity. MP9 Grim, kill for Grim. But this 4v5 is still not the, the prettiest scenario here for complexity. Yeah, you got yourself a man advantage here, but you're low on HP for Grim. And you just don't have the firepower to make this any easier here. Got some utility being lined up towards that outer yard. I'm gonna just give that all over to Wiz. He'll start throwing in the utility. Get that wall of smoke safe and sound. Good news further though for complexity is that they do have a player in towards secret. That can do some serious damage. Halls are gonna look to reclaim lobby control as well here. Being watched and waited for and opened. The door there will be just shut in their face. 60 will claim that kill on the re-aggression and we're right back to an even stead. And again, all those same factors are true. Slowing things down now, Forsaken. 40 seconds on the clock. I mean, these slow crawling defaults have really tested Complexity's patience, and they've been punished time in and time out. But thus far, Forsaken just want to recongregate, go back up to that top site. Grim is awaiting alongside another player, I believe, in Squeak Door. Yeah, JT in opposite vent. So this crossfire is essentially for the map here. Good output right there. JT's finding seconds. a kill, but yeah, there's not a lot of time left. They've got to find the kills, and they might be set into a panic. Multiple members still running through on the site, and JT, once again, going to be able to step up here big time for his team. Absolutely necessary output out of JT there. I mean, in that situation, 
the the slow defaults finally come back to haunt Forsaken. This time around, it's a bit too telegraphed. There isn't enough ramp pressure. There isn't enough outside pressure, and so the so the ladder base players don't really have to to go searching at all. They can just rotate through heaven very easily. With how low the clock was, there was really no room for error whatsoever. JT has a whale of a time in that top site. The job's not finished. Nine rounds to go if they want to take it to overtime. And sure, this seventh round should be posted quite easily. But how much momentum can they can they potentially gas up here before either we go to Ancient or we go to overtime? JT gonna have himself a field day. Like you said, again, it's a lot of work to be done. Complexity, they, they have to be flawless from this point forward. On the CT side of Nuke, you can kind of envision it happening more so than a lot of maps, but mm -hmm. I feel like out, out of this uh, calling on the T side, they have enough depth in them to at least get one round. They have enough firepower to find some success here. We're still going to be off the op, which is a bit unfortunate for this T side. You got stand on a I mean, UMP, but... In terms of openings, uh, Infinite has been putting in work, though, on outside that I don't necessarily think you even need Wiz on the AWP if, if Infinite is just going to open up that part of the map for you. Oh my god. Oh. Almost opening these up right there on a Grim. He's down to 5 HP. They fake the presence of a potential vent drop. I mean, Stanislaw's in and out like an absolute ghost, and now lining up a flashbang here to go in towards the ramp side here, trying to disrupt Floppy's security over towards this ramp room. And he just has to give up some ground here. It's a great Molotov, but it's a great kill there. Again, he gets his kill. He gives up the space. Absolute textbook out of Floppy. But he's still a bit low on HP. He's had to sacrifice half his health standing in the molly, and he's still got a very low HP bar in Grim as well. Rotations are here, though. Elige is down into that lower site, so Floppy's not alone. But decisions have to be made now for Forsaken. Do they commit to this lower site play? They've stalled out for quite a bit of time that perhaps it's a bit more telegraphed, but here they come anyways. Oof. Elige kind of messing up the line right there, and it's going to be a quick trade delivered. Grim's still low on HP, but a healthy chunk off a of 60 and infinite. It's going to make this job difficult here, but you still have two stars ready to show up here. Sixty looking to defend. He will knock one down, but JT delivers an instant trade. And it's all on the shoulders of Infinite to come through big time, but he will be shut down from long range. Hulls are going to claim the victory in this round, and Complexity going to continue to claw things back. Live to fight another day here on Complexity. It gets a little dicey there, but they find a way to... to Hold on for dear life, essentially. I mean, I'm liking I'm liking just a little bit more gusto out of complexity. You need that just if, if you are going to that third map. You just want to see more life out of them. You just want to see the, the complexity of old. That one that we saw in Vertigo that was able to close it out, that was able to show just very aggressive stances on that CT side. Yeah, that's the complexity that we know and love. And I'd like to at least see that before we potentially head to ancient you know i mean we don't want to have a limp a limp third map with with how this series has gone so far eight stack has been interesting in, in terms of the position that they throw it in over towards that wall six seat struggling miss. to get down the vent but he gets it a little bit delayed wait a second this hasn't been hurt or anything like that holzerk has no idea that anyone is behind him and i'm actually wondering if that's oh, going to no. be a problem in this round or not right surely Surely you should have some sense of an idea that that's a possibility, but it doesn't seem like that's been called over. This is incredibly awkward now all of a sudden. But no one's going to chase Halzer down. Said Floppy going to look to stand his crown, but he doesn't get anything. And again, these rotations are going to be haphazard. They don't realize that players are down the vent, but neither oh, no. the 60 here not turning his attention in time. A little bit caught off guard, but that's where JVA can strike here. Another headshot out of his Tech 9. JT going to find continued success over towards the ramp side. At the very least, there's more opportunities. Elise had to pick up the AWP to start not clawing like his this. way back into this one here. Met by the Molly, not connecting on the Tech 9 shots from Stan from long range here. But Infinite sure will. A little bit of damage on the JT here, but still stuck into the 2v3. The advantage still continues to favor complexity here. Sixy goes further and further, trying to hunt Elise down. Finally, will be able to take care of him. 
But Stan stands close by here. Bomb's been tapped, but it's not being stuck here. They have the kits to get the job done, but 60 finds another kill. And the swing here from Stan is devastating as the time is running out here. Grim getting baited by the wide swing that comes through eventually. And Forsaken are going to take it into a third map despite all the odds. What a hole in the defense. I mean, I it, it's just insane to me that there is no protocol for that lower side player. I mean, Hauslick is, is staring up at, at Marshmallow the entire round.